Hi, this is Paul, City Sailing. Welcome to our day out on the PS Waverley from Danoon Pier to Tinnabuik and return through the Carls of Butte. Here she is arriving on the new Danoon Pier. Um, she doesn't use the Victorian Danoon Pier anymore. I don't know why. It is much more iconic and beautiful, but we'll see that in a minute. And you can see as she comes alongside, she has to come alongside fast um, to keep her steerage way because the only steering is the rudder at the back and she doesn't rely on the prop wash that boats have with their uh, propeller on the rudder. So here she is coming alongside and she has to go hard astern to come alongside. Also when she comes alongside she has to uh, allow for the space for the paddle boxes. So here she is with the springs on alongside looking down the Clyde and here to Danoon Pier with a long bow line on and we'll stroll through the boat and we'll have a look with her tied up and we'll have a look at her stern line. So we can see the paddle boxes sticking out, which makes it harder for uh, the skipper to berth and passengers still embarking on. And we can see the stern line and the spring and the old Victorian um, pier, probably the best preserved Victorian pier on the Clyde, which on a sunny day is absolutely gorgeous. And the whole of Danoon, the whole area of Argyle is absolutely gorgeous. And the last of the passengers on board, so the, uh, the gangplank is brought in and it lives on the deck. Um, a surprisingly quick turnaround, um, she comes down the Clyde and she uh, disembarks passengers to uh, to go off to go end noon for the day. Then embarks passengers for the rest of the trip to Tinnebruch. Um, she's licensed for more passengers to come down the Clyde than she can in the estuary. This is a MCA or Marine and Coast Guard Agency requirement of the amount of passengers in the type of water that she's operating in. So she'll come down the Clyde, disembark passengers who will spend the day in Danoon, and then embark less passengers to go um, further down. Uh, today, it's three and round through Tinnabuich. Um As she um, can only power through the paddles, and the paddles are fixed, she can only, only go forward or reverse. Um, she can't make one go forward and one reverse to turn round. So, if you ever need a masterclass in how to manoeuvre a vessel, um, go on the Waverley um, because the berthing and the unberthing has to be done with spring on the lines. So here she'll either spring or she'll let go of the stern line here and she'll spring off the bow line. So there goes, there goes stern line, comes in and it's pulled in with a heaving line there. The lines people um, are volunteers. Um, one is a local chap from our sailing club, Bob, volunteers um, every year. Um, the Waverley relies a lot on volunteers to uh, to help. And here, here she has lines thrown off and she's ready to go. And there you can just see to the right of the funnels the line getting tight. So she's motored forward, the line will go tight and that will twist her. Um, around the berth. So she's been a little bit of pressure on forward. Then getting ready to get the line off. The line goes off. And so she's an angle at the berth. And then away she goes. And that gives her the angle to come away from the berth in Danoon, get up to speed quickly, and go inside the rocks, which are just off Danoon, which are called the Gantucks. You can just see them to the left hand side. Um, unfortunately in the past she has hit these and um, she did do damage here and she dried out for a tide on them. So careful to miss the Gantox um, and depart down the Clyde. And there's the view from the stern that's coming away from the new pier. And the Gantox on the left hand side as we pick up speed with the cardinal mark just on this side. Um, just on our side, um, there's an outline uh, rock there, across there and down the Clyde. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go below and we're going to uh, have a look at the engine, which is a triple expansion um, steam engine. But the engineer is going to explain all that, he knows a lot more about it than I do. But I do love this view um, in the engine room, looking out at the paddles of Port Hall. 
and I'm gonna let you have a, a listen to the engine and listen to the engineer. I'm gonna come back after the engineers and explain the trip expansion um, of the engine. seagoing passenger paddle steamer in the world. She was built in 1946 to replace the original one which was lost in 
Dunkirk with the evacuation of the troops in Dunkirk. She originally sailed from Craig and Doran on the 4th of Clyde to Alakar on the Lot Long, and that was until 1973. And since then, since 1973, she was bought by the Paddle Steamer Preservation Society, um, and she's been restored to her present condition at the moment. And here's the bell with the uh, P.S. Waverley on the bell. On the funnels, um, only one of them has smoke coming out of out of it. Um, when she was originally built with coal fire boiler, um, they used both funnels, but when she was converted to oil, um, they only use one funnel, so the other funnel is a dummy. And here's the plaque to say that the original one was sunk by enemy action in Dunkirk in 1940, and this one um, so it was built in 1946, so as paddle steamers go, she's relatively recent. And here we are, gone past Rothsey, and we're coming up uh, towards the Carls of Butte. Anybody who's been through the Carls of Butte, it's an incredibly small gap to go through. Um, so she has to go through at speed to maintain steerage, but we'll show you as we come up um, her going through the gap. I've speeded this up a little bit, um, going past Column Triumph and the Column Triumph Hotel. Um, past the, set, the uh, famous um, the White Holiday Cottages, um, past the uh, the ferry to the Isle of, the Isle of Butte, Butte uh, which only takes seven minutes. I think it's one of the shortest ferries on the um, Calmac routes, um, seven minutes from one side to the other. And we're coming up towards the, uh, the gap on the Carls of Butte now. just coming past the ferry. A bit of history, in 2019 she was withdrawn from service uh, due to boiler problems and an appeal was, was launched with a target of £2.3 million pounds to recommission her. Um, it was announced in 2019 that the new boilers had been ordered um, and those boilers were replaced and she returned to sea in August in 2020 for sea trials and then she was um, had the problem with Covid which meant the next two seasons had very limited services. And also, um, in 2022, um, she hit the pier in Broderick um, in September, damaging the bow, bow, which meant she had to come out of operation um, uh, to be mended. The uh, Waverley was um, run by Calmac, Caledonia McBray Ferries, um, until 1973. Um, and she was taken out of service because she was too costly to operate and she needed significant um, expenditure um, to keep her going. And then she was taken over by the Paddle Steamer Preservation Society which had been set up to look after paddle steamers um, and they'd bought the uh, Kingsway Castle which was the small river dart um, paddle steamer. She's the only surviving paddle steamer to run off coal if you get a chance to go on her. Um, she's a lovely paddle steamer. Um, so Kermat were keen to ensure that she was preserved and sold it um, sold the Waverley to the Preservation Society for a token sum of a pound, um, although at the time neither of them believed that um, she would go back in service. After that, a public appeal was launched um, to secure the funding for the return of the Waverley, and a fundraising operation um, was successful, and the Paddle Steamer Preservation Society found itself running the cruise um, operation Waverley excursions, and since then the Waverley has gone around the country, um, she goes around the country each year. Here she is going through the tight gap um, through the Carls of Butte and I came to the side here just to see how close the port hand marker went to the paddle box. Uh, I would say within a couple of metres and on the way back I did the same on the other side as a couple of metres. So she's only got about two metres to spare on either side coming through the narrows um, with the Carls of Butte. Obviously having to go through at a reasonable speed to be able to keep steerage as we go through. And then this opens out and you get the beautiful views um, through the Carls of Butte um, up the lock and onto our left in um, we can see Tinnebrook will open up soon. As we just go through to Tinnebrook, we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, triple expansion marine steam engine. This was built by Rankin um, Blackmore um, in the Eagle Foundry in Greenock in Scotland. Um, it's rated for 2,100 horsepower and the trial speed it got to 18.37 knots 
at a revolution of 57.8 and as we saw earlier in the video we can see the engine actually working and talk to the engineers. The engineer explained about the uh, triple expansion. Um, it expands the steam in three stages, so with three cylinders, each cylinder as it comes out the first cylinder which is under higher pressure, uh, second cylinder slightly lower pressure and the third cylinder lower pressure so each cylinder has to be larger as it goes down the chain uh, because of the lowering of the pressure of the uh, the steam as it comes through. Uh, interestingly the um, Royal Mail ship the Titanic had a four cylinder triple expansion engines. During her life the Waverley has had several um, different colour schemes. Personally I like the colour scheme that she has at the moment. It's iconic and beautiful. When she was launched the paddle boxes were painted black and then in 1959 they were changed to white and returned to black with white edges in 1972 and back to all black in 1977. Um, the gold stripes on the hull were removed in 1954 but restored during the 2000 rebuild. Um, today the Waverley as we see her is the LNER or London North Eastern Railway um, 1947 um, colours of red white with black funnels with a traditional brown grained or scumbled um, superstructure um, and black paddle wheel boxes decorated with the gold leafing on each side. So when she was launched um, she had square windows um, on her sponsors instead of the current portholes. For most of her life the upper cabins were painted white and had wooden floors. Um, all have had layout improvements sometime in the ship's life. Um, the Waverley, she sails in all weathers um, in salt water which would cause pale brown rust streaks to appear by the end of the season. So cosmetic painting improvements are done annually um, as the ship is uh, dry docked and refitted and inspected and has her um, MCA inspections. Um, since 1962 uh, when the original funnels were renewed uh, replacement items have been slightly out of parallel due to the heavier welded steel construction. Um, this was resolved in the 2000 um, to 2003 refit and the two funnels are now parallel. Um, and I think with the LN LNER um, colours that she has today, she's iconic um, and the colours of the funnels is iconic and the beautiful way that the, uh, um, the integral carvings are, are are on the uh, pedal boxes. Uh, she looks fantastic today. The next clip I've uh, sped up and we're we'll going down the West Kyle um, towards Tinnaburg and there's Tinnaburg. Because the uh, the swinging circle of the Waverley is so large uh, we go past Tinnaburg and do a huge circle and back alongside the pier. Um, you can see the uh, first mate there with the winch. The winch um, and the windlass at the front is actually steam operated. You can see it turning around and just below when you can see the barrels there, the pistons. So the pistons go in and out there um, and that steams the uh, the winch on the bow. So they do a massive circle round and then come in to the approach into the pier. So when we're uh, on the pier we're facing the correct direction to come back through the uh, the Carls of Butte and past the Burnt Islands on the way back to uh, Danoon. So we're coming into our final approach into the pier at Tinnaburg. And we can see the pier just in front of us. Um, nice shallow approach, getting ready with the bow line and it looks like we go past the pier, but we have to allow room for the uh, the paddle boxes come in at a reasonable speed and then a stern and along she comes and the last bit will be done by lines. So there's the first line going across, uh, misses it. Second line misses it. It's a good job, it's a, um, it's a good alongside by the, the captain. Still slowly coming in. And on the pier, there's not much room apart from the paddle box um, to get alongside. But once we get in, get the lines on, away we go.
after a fantastic day in Tinnerburg, uh, we're back aboard and ready to get going. So she's going to let go of the breast line, see the breast line there, just below the uh, pedal box, let go of that. As well. And faintly three short blasts, and uh, which means she's going astern. So she'll go astern slowly and she'll take up on the line and spring out the berth. I'm trying to explain what's going on as it happens. So there's the line taking up and she'll spring on that line and it'll bring the bow off the Waverley, off the berth. She has to spring on and off um, because the uh, she has to be going along to be able to steer because the paddles are fixed. You can't alternate this because you can see her pivoting on the berth on the stern line there. And she's getting a nice angle and then they release the line and they'll let go of the line off the pier. You can still see her slowly coming off the berth. And there's a little small um, heaving line and they'll pull the line in to the side of the Waverley. So she's coming in there and that line will live. So the end of the, uh, the line is in the midships of the vessel. So you have to keep pulling it in and out all the time. So there it is being pulled in. So it's ready to go for the next berth into noon and then secure the other end. And we need to get a little bit of speed up to be able to get steerage. That was perfect. Well done. And now she's away from the pier. Um, you can ring through on the telegraph for full speed ahead and we can leave Tinnenburg and go through the Carls of Butte, through the Burnt Isles, and back towards the Noon. And it doesn't take long to get back up to full speed. there in the previous picture enjoying the beautiful view back up um, we were going to Loch Ridden before we turned to starboard through the burnt isles uh, just mes mesmerizing watching the uh, the weight coming out of the pedal box as she goes along looking back through the uh, the west cars and Tinnerburg where we come from to me one of my favorite um, parts of Scotland absolutely beautiful this passage through the burnt isles and Loch Ridden Amazing. And I've speeded this clip up of us going back through the Carls of Butte. Um, and just to show you how close we go past the starboard hand mark, I would have said a metre or so um, off the wheel box and probably a metre or so off the wheel box on the other side. And I love this one. This is probably the most picturesque toilet. Um, the toilet's blocked off because of, it was COVID at the time. Um, and looking through the view when you go to the toilet, looking out the porthole, it's got to be the best toilet in the country, isn't it? Um, Toward Lighthouse, coming back up um, Clyde on the north shore of the Clyde. On our way back towards Danoon. And from an Ellen to Danoon, I've sped this clip up, so we're whizzing up um, the Clyde and onto the, uh, the pier in Danoon. And she's done a big swing round, just coming at a uh, shallow angle into the new pier in Danoon. You can see the iconic Victorian pier on your right there, which has been recently restored and looks absolutely gorgeous. 
it's a shame that the Waverley, the iconic paddle steamer, doesn't come into the, uh, the iconic um, Victorian pier of Dunoon. Anyway, here she comes. Got to come in at a reasonable speed. And they're ready with the heaving lines to the, uh, the shore team. speed they can steer, first line across, they've got it. Second line across, they've got it. And this is another berth where there's not a lot of room on the berth, you've got to line up exactly the paddle box um, up with the berth, and here she is beautifully alongside. Expertly done. Lines on. And we've disembarked from the uh, the Waverley after a lovely day. Here's Bob from our local sailing club, the Holy Lock Sailing Club, also a uh, city sailing customer. Uh, Got to get that in. Um, is letting go of the bow line. So just waiting for the, uh, the request from the first mate on the bow. Remaining passengers that have spent the day in Danoon have uh, reboarded and they're ready to go back up to Glasgow. So there we go, bow line off, and that'll be pulled in with the, uh, the heaving line or tricing line, and it'll be stored next to the uh, engine box. And we'll get ready to spring out. Why are they waiting to spring out? To say that the only way that this uh, paddle steamer can remain in service is if you go on it. Um, it's reliant totally on the donations and passengers. So if you get a chance, it's an absolutely amazing day out. So as she's going backwards, she's pulling on the stern line, and you can see the whole boat twisting um, to use the side, the end of the pier, the knuckle of the pier, to twist her right round because she wants to go in the opposite direction up the Clyde towards Glasgow. So she will twist her, which is called springing. So she's springing off the stern line. Um, it's handy that the pier ends there and you can go all the way round. And then she's stopped and she'll slightly come out and then they'll let go of the stern line and wait for it to come out and then go forward. So it gives her plenty of time, plenty of time for the lines, lines people. And here she comes, engaged into gear, lines away, and she's off back up the Clyde. So I said, Paddle Steam Waverley, she is part of the west coast of Scotland, she is part of the history, she's the only seagoing paddle steamer left. Um, and I do urge her the only way that she's going to carry on is if you go on the boat. Um, it is absolute great value for money. She's a fantastic boat. It's an amazing day out all around from on deck to where you go, the views, um, seeing in the engine room. So I would like to say thank you to all the staff, all the people on the Waverley um, and wish good passages. This was filmed last year in 2021 and hopefully we'll get a go on, the, uh, on her this year, either in Scotland or when she comes around to be done. We try every year to go on her. Um, in Scotland, but we did one trip from Tower um, Tower Bridge to um, South End and came back on the train. That was amazing to uh, have her come off the pier, um, Tower Pier, and then being uh, brought around by a tug and Tower Bridge opening and coming through Tower Bridge and going down the Thames. So, on behalf of City Sailing, um, Waverley, and um, the Secret Coast, Argyle, and Butte. Thanks very much for watching the video. I know it's a long one. I hope you really enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed our day out. Um, I hope you, you'll watch the rest of our videos. Um, they're quite varied, navigation and other interesting videos. Thanks very much. Um, this is Paul from City Sailing, out.